Hi there, this is Heather of Shutterbug 101. Today we'll be going over the Sony RX10 Mark IV, the one inch sensor bridge camera. Let's get started. The Sony Cybershot RX10 Mark IV is a 1 inch 20 megapixel sensor bridge camera with a 2.4 aperture availability and a zoom range of 24 to 600 millimeters. This camera has a tilting touch LCD screen, a built in flash and hot shoe for external speed lights, a continuous drive of 24 frames per second, and is environmentally sealed. It also has 4K video up to 30 frames, a microphone and headphone port, and built-in Wi-Fi for transferring images to a smart device. Today we'll be going over the buttons, doors, and menus to help you find your way around this camera and become more familiar with the tools and features it has. So, going over the Sony RX10 Mark IV, um, you know, for me, I am a Sony shooter. I love Sony. I find it very easy to use. Um, this one, you know, I, is actually, it was actually my first time using it. Um, I'm used to using the Sony interchangeable lens cameras and although this is a very similar layout to what they have on their interchangeable lens cameras, it was still a little different. <laughs> um, so for me, it, it took a little bit of adjusting because I was used to uh, one button or dial being in one place and on this camera it's actually completely in a different area. So. Um, my first impressions with this camera was that in daylight and in good lighting, this camera is pretty magnificent. The fact that it has a 2.4 aperture availability is pretty amazing. It is uh, pretty hefty, but I like the grip on it. The zoom is also pretty fantastic, but it's almost a must that you have to have that stabilizer on because with it zooming out to that 600 area, and it not having a built-in stabilizer in the camera, it's only optical stabilization. It can only do so much. So for shaky hands, this can be a little bit difficult to shoot with on the full zoom. The continuous drive was also pretty fantastic at capturing uh, any sort of action. Uh, where I saw it start to falter was in the night shots that I took of, um, of them dancing. And I found that it had naturally a lot of light gathering problems. Because this camera only has a one inch sensor and I'm used to bigger sensors, I wasn't able to use the settings that I would have liked to use in those outdoor nighttime situations um, as I could with my other cameras. This camera doesn't have a large enough sensor to be able to do so. So although it did fantastic in the daytime, I found that at nighttime it did struggle a little bit, even with that 2.4 aperture. Now that's going to go for any point and shoot camera. It really is. It's uh, There's not many cameras out there that even have this aperture availability. Um, so you do have to keep that in mind. Another thing uh, that I did try was the hot shoe on this, which I will go over a little bit more in detail later, but it's essentially what you would attach your external flash to. Uh, to get more flash than just what this pop-up flash will get you here. I found that using my Godox flash that I usually use with my other two Sonys wasn't communicating quite right with this camera and it could be because it was just off-brand um, but once I did get it communicating I even found that it just was way too bright. So um, if you have played with this camera before with a actual Sony flash and you've had good results, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to kind of hear your feedback on using a actual Sony flash on this to see you know, how well this works with the camera itself. Um, other than that, let's go ahead and get into the walkthrough here. So the side of the lens here, you can see that uh, on the lens, we're gonna have three rings. The front ring here is going to be for focusing during manual focus. This is gonna be for fine tuning in with zoom. Otherwise, you can use the zoom lever right by the shutter button here on the front, depending on you know what, how you wanna use it. And then this one here is gonna be your aperture ring. So this is where you're gonna control your aperture. You have from 2.4 all the way to F16, which is really nice. 
Um, on the side of the lens here, you have a custom button, which you can actually program to do different things. So if you wanted to hold this button down for changing ISO or changing focusing settings or whatever you wanted to, you can actually change the function of this button inside the camera itself. We do have a switch here that does control the focusing in the lens. So you have full and then you have three meters to infinity. Um, so what this means is that if you are any close, if your subject is any closer than three meters from you, then you'll probably want to put it on full. That way it can focus anywhere closer than three meters to the full infinity um, option. However, if you know that your subject is going to be more than three meters from you, it kind of eliminates that in between you and three meters area and it knows I'm just going to focus on farther than three meters and the focusing should actually be more pinpoint and more spot on um, at that point. It should be faster, really. When it comes to this switch here on the camera, this is going to control our focusing. So the S is gonna be single autofocus, which means it will focus and lock onto a subject. This is gonna be good for still subjects like landscapes, people posing. And then we go to our C here, right? The C, we're gonna skip the A for now. Uh, this is gonna be autofocus continuous. This is going to be um, where the camera is going to continually autofocus as the subject moves. So sports, wildlife, maybe your kids running around. Then you have AFA, which is gonna be autofocus auto, where you're letting the camera determine if the subject is still or moving. So it's gonna switch back and forth from AFS to AFC for you. Um, and then of course you have your manual focus options here, the DMF and the MF. Going to the side of the camera here, just to uh, the side of the switch, uh, we do have a couple doors. Uh, it does indicate that this camera does have Wi-Fi, which is great. Connect this to your smart device and transfer your pictures. This is going to give you your mic and headphone port, as you can see underneath the door here. You have your multi and your HDMI. HDMI, of course, is going to be for connecting it to a, um, a bigger display screen, your television, um, a projector to show off pictures that you maybe you just shot an event and you want to do kind of a highlight reel or you just want a vacation you want to show your family and friends. The multi is going to be a USB cable which is going to allow you to transfer your images from the camera to your computer. It's going to allow you to charge the battery in camera when you're on the go. It's also going to be used if the camera needs any firmware updates which you can check on the Sony site. On this side of the camera we have our door, we have a door which is going to be uh, for our card here. Now on the door itself, on the door itself you can see it has a little picture of a card with um, one of the corners cut off. All SD cards have one corner cut off so it just shows you the direction that you're putting the card in. And also a little reminder that it is spring loaded so you want to push in to take it out and also push in to lock it in. Um, so just so you know not to pry it out with your fingers because then you will break that mechanism. The bottom of the camera here of course is going to have our universal tripod mount. Now some people have gone, well that's kind of weird, why is it set fo so far back and not in the center like it is a lot of other cameras? The reason that is, is because when this lens extends, because there's so much glass on this, um, the weight shifts. So this is just going to be its center balance area when you have it on a tripod. And then of course here you have your door for your battery. Okay, You'll find that this battery is used quite a bit in the uh, crop sensor um, interchangeable lens cameras which is kind of nice and because I have one of those I had extra batteries when I went to go shoot with this which was pretty cool. And then You'll see on the bottom of the lens here, we actually have a little hidden switch where it says click on or off. And then that refers to our aperture ring. So right now, if you listen closely, it's actually going to provide you a little click when you move that ring. If we turn that off, it's actually nice and smooth now. So you don't kind of feel that confirmation click. For me, I kind of like that click, that it gives that 
I'm moving to another stop of light, um, but it's all going to be preference for you. Going over the top of the camera here. So we have our on and off switch, which is going to be right by the shutter button and the zoom button here. We have our mode dial, which we'll go ahead and go over here first. So green, of course, is going to say auto. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's automatic. So whatever picture you decide to take, it's automatically going to adjust the focusing. It's going to automatically adjust the lighting, the colors, everything for you. Um, so it, it sets the settings to what it believes is going to give you the best possible outcome. Now, sometimes auto is not always perfect. Um, so this camera does give you the opportunity to control your settings, which is what this aperture ring is for. Now you can't use your aperture ring in automatic. Uh, you can't use a lot of settings in automatic because the camera is doing all the work. So if you want to start learning more about your settings or you want to utilize them, if you already know what they are, you start out in your P mode, which is going to be your program mode. This is going to allow you to change either your aperture or shutter speed. It's going to allow you to change your ISO, which is your image sensitivity to light. It's going to allow you to change that focusing dial up in the front of the camera, where to focus, um, your white balance, which we'll all go over in a bit, but it gives you control over all of that. And then it changes everything else that you don't change. Um, so the pictures still work out in your favor. The aperture mode is specifically controlling this dial here and the ISO if you wish where if you change the aperture, it's going to change the shutter speed for you. So you can see here, if I change this number out, you can see that it does change the shutter speed, which is gonna be this number here. The more open that the uh, aperture is, which is the lower numbers, the faster it is, because this 30 you're seeing is actually 1 30th of a second. In shutter speed mode, you're going to adjust this number here while the camera figures out the aperture. So no matter what this is at, um, you're just controlling the shutter speed, which you're going to adjust by using this wheel back here. So you're gonna adjust your shutter speed here and it should adjust the aperture for you or it will adjust the ISO to compensate, um, depending if you want to do a long exposure or a short exposure. The M, of course, is going to be full manual mode that allow you to change your aperture and change your shutter speed accordingly and do whatever you wish. Uh, MR is going to be your memory recall. Uh, this is going to uh, recall back to settings that you had previously used so you can uh, utilize those settings again, which you can um, adjust this. You have your video mode, which in auto mode, in P mode, in A mode, in S mode, in any of those modes, you can actually do video. You don't have to be on your video mode to do it. All you have to do is hit this red movie button once to start recording, again, to stop recording. It's just that in the movie mode, this is where you're going to see the mic levels and you know the histogram and those type of things. And it's gonna show you um, more options in the menu for something like this if your target is video. You have the HFR setting, which is going to be the high frame rate setting. Uh, it's going to be for um, slow motion video or to make your video really fast, kind of have more control over the speed by having more frames. You have your panoramic mode, which is going to give you those nice wide establishing shots of landscapes by moving your camera very steadily left to right, not up and down and shaky because then it won't work. And then last but least, we have our SCN, which stands for scene. Our scene mode is going to be automatic, but it's going to be very specific um, to what you're taking pictures of. So if we want to change the scene, we're going to hit our function button here and we're going to go down to where we see this little face. Okay, this is where we do our scene selection. So you have portrait, sports, macro, landscape, sunset, night scene, handheld night scene, night portrait, and anti-motion blur. These are all automatic modes. They're just very specific to a very specific circumstance. So the only control that you have is telling the camera, hey, I want you to figure out the settings, but just know I'm taking a picture of a person, or I'm taking a picture of a flower, or I'm taking a picture of someone doing sports. Um, that way it knows kind of where to guide its settings to. 
Um, so we do have the hot shoe here, which I had um, explained earlier is for an external flash if you do not wish to use the pop-up flash. Um, this can also be used as a cold shoe option. Hot shoe refers to it as it uh, having an electric purpose where it actually feeds um, electricity or um, communication from the camera to a attachment on this shoe. A cold shoe means that it does not have any sort of communication. It's just meant as a holder. So you can actually use this for a mic or even you can use it as a uh, stand to do like hold a mic, a larger screen if the screen is not big enough for you for video, that sort of thing. Um, but it, all you need is a um, hot shoe slash cold shoe attachment here. Otherwise, if you don't use the mic port to attach the mic here for better sound, this is going to be your microphone built into the camera, which is going to take sound from all around it. So if you're wanting more direct sound and not sound from behind you to the sides of you, behind your subject, um, you can go ahead and get a more directional um, microphone or even like a lav mic to where it's just them talking, which is really good. So we have our flash button here, which is going to activate the pop-up flash. Now this is only going to pop up when you want it to by hitting this button. If you're in auto mode, it's not going to automatically pop this flash up for you. So for me, I personally like that option. I don't like it when it pops up all by itself. Um, but you know, it's, it's your own preference of kind of what you like. There's a little light bulb here. This is going to light up the screen in a dark situation where it's going to be hard to see this screen with your settings. You have the C2 and C1 buttons. These are also custom buttons, very similar to the button that you see here. These are customizable to change and assign uh, any settings here that you wish. Then we have our exposure button, or then we have our exposure dial here, which is gonna control brightness and darkness to your subjects. In order to change this option, you're gonna to need to actually dial into your P mode, which I'm going to stay in for the remainder of the video, because you find that a lot of things on auto do not show up in the menu or they don't work because the camera's on automatic. So on our P mode, if I were to go plus one, two, three, you'll see that the scene gets brighter. If I were to go minus, it actually gets darker. Um, so it really, kind of, and then if you have it set on zero, it's going to be what the camera recommends as that 18% gray that it's looking for. Um, so it's just an easy way to make your scene a little bit brighter, a little bit darker without changing any major settings. Now I'm going to the back of the camera here. Um, my apologies for the screen getting so dark. It's trying to compensate for the screen here, which I think is important for you guys to see. So we have our menu button on this side, which we'll go over last. We have our viewfinder, which is an electronic viewfinder. If you put your face up to it and block this sensor, it's actually going to turn that um, viewfinder on. Um, and then when you break your face away, it's going to turn the screen back on. We've already gone over the movie button and the wheel here. We have our AEL button. It's gonna be our auto exposure lock. For instance, if you have someone that is standing in front of a window, right? It's a backlit window, but it's darker inside. But you really want to see them. You don't care what's going on behind them. You just want them to stand in front of the window. You can use that AEL button to get the light from their face, hold it, back up, and take the picture, and you'll find that their face will come out clearly, but the window behind them will be really, really bright. And the reason that is, is because you want the exposure of their face. Now, say you want them to come out as a silhouette. You want them completely black, maybe doing a dancer's pose in the window or something like that. You don't want to see uh, their facial features or details at all. What you can do is you can use your auto exposure lock on the window uh, where it's going to be the brightest, back up and take the picture while holding that AEL button. And there you go, you'll have them as a silhouette. So it just kind of locks in where you want your lighting uh, to come from, where you want it to be of importance. We have our function button here, which is going to be our quick menu. So in our quick menu, we have a variety of things we can change. This one right up here is gonna be our drive mode. This is gonna be like, uh, so the single square single shooting. If you click and hold your shutter button, it takes one picture. Uh, the continuous high is that 24 frames per second while holding that shutter button down. Then you have your timer and bracketing settings all in the drive mode. Uh, you have your flash mode and naturally if your flash is not popped up, it will not fire. So you can turn the flash on auto, turn the flash off when it is popped up. Otherwise you can use it as full flash, slow sync for nighttime. You have your flash compensation. So if you want it to come out brighter or darker, 
You have your focus area where you want it to autofocus. So wide is considering the whole um, the whole screen. Center is going to be directly in the center. You have your flexible spot, which will allow you to pick and choose where on the screen that you would like to focus. And you have your expandable flexible spot, which is going to kind of pick a general area wherever you want it to be. I personally like to keep mine in the center. Use the flexible spot, um, which will allow me to kind of touch anywhere on the uh, screen to be able to choose where I want to focus. You have your ISO, which I recommend if you're learning your ISO or maybe you don't really know what it is quite yet, keep it on auto. And for this camera, I would set it between 100 and 3200. And how you do that is you'll see that there's a little arrow here. So you just click the arrow and it allows you to adjust either of those. Um, otherwise, you can set your ISO to be whatever you would like. But 3200, I think, should be your max. Um, you have your metering mode where it's taking that light from, very similar to your auto exposure lock, just without using that button. That's where it's gonna take the light from. So multi is considering the entire image and finding a balance for 18% gray. Center is gonna take whatever's directly in the center. And then you have spot, which is typically what you would wanna use alongside your auto exposure lock. Then you have auto white balance or white balance. I like to keep it on auto for your everyday shooting. You're welcome to play with this, but as you can see, if we, as we scroll through this, we get oranges and blues um, and different shades there. So it really controls the temperature of your image, but auto white balance, the majority of the time, does a great job at figuring out what it should be. Um, you always want to remember that if you do play with this in different situations, whether with the landscape photo or indoors, you always want to change it back to auto white balance when you're done. That way you don't change location with a different lighting and end up with orange and blue people. The DRO or the auto high dynamic range, um, that's going to kind of find a balance between shadow and highlights for you. Um, if you're not going to shoot in RAW and change those settings yourself, you're welcome to give this a try. Um, we have Creative Style, which is going to change the way the color translates in the camera. So you can choose Standard, which is what I shoot in. You can do Vivid Color, Monochrome, anything like that. Uh, picture Effect, which at the moment is set to Off. Um, that might be something you have to change in the menu. I'm not sure why it's grayed out here, but that will allow you to change uh, different filters. So you can do like a selective color, which would be like red, blue, yellow, or green. And then everything else is black and white. Um, it has different filters there, like different black and whites or sepia or things like that. You have your picture profile, which I would just keep off. I wouldn't really worry about that. And this is just showing what your shoot mode is, which is gonna be that P mode. Then we're gonna go over, uh, as you can see here on the uh, side of the camera, I believe that you can program pushing right, left, and down on this. If you push up this DISP, this is gonna change the display of the back. So you have a level, you have just the settings, uh, you have a visual with kind of all of your settings. Um, I personally like this one, very simple. It'll show your battery level and then your basic settings down here. The C3 button is also a customizable button in shooting mode, very similar to your C2 and C1 buttons up on top. Um, but if you are in your um, playback mode here, which is this button, which looks back at pictures that you've taken, uh, naturally I don't have a memory card in it, so we can't look back at pictures, but if I had a picture up here and I wanted to delete it. You just hit the trash can button and select delete. And then we're gonna go ahead and go over the menu here. Going over the menu, you see that we have these different tabs on top. Um, the first tab is going to be your uh, photography tab. The second tab is gonna be your video and things related to video like stabilization and stuff like that. That's gonna be found in tab two. The third tab is gonna be a little world symbol. It's gonna be your internet or your Wi-Fi settings little playback uh, setting, which is gonna match your playback button here to look back at pictures. That's gonna be like for viewing your photos, for rotation, for editing. You have the toolbox, which is general settings like time, date, and um, language. And then we have the little star here, which is our My Menu. So let's go ahead and get into these. Uh, the camera tab one, 
Uh, like I said, this is going to be mainly focused on the photography portion. Um, a lot of these settings are actually found on the outside of your camera or through your quick menu. You can uh, connect quite a few of these to your custom buttons if you wish to do that instead of going into the menu because that's what they're there for. Uh, you have your quality, so if you want to shoot in RAW, JPEG, or both. Image size, the aspect ratios, typically 3 to 2 or 4 to 3 is usually the most common ones. Uh, your panoramic size or direction. Uh, your, if you want to put on long exposure noise reduction, I turn it off for uh, editing purposes, but if you don't plan on editing your photos in like a Lightroom or Photoshop, you, know, you can go ahead and keep it on, let the camera kind of help you out with that. Uh, high ISO noise reduction, color space, always keep it RSGB just because that's the majority of what printers and computers are going to see and translate for you. Uh, you can change uh, different things in like your automatic mode, your scene selection, your drive mode, your bracketing settings, that memory recall button if you want to set settings to that. Focusing area, the autofocus illuminator is going to be this little LED that's up in the front of the camera. It shines out to help it be able to focus a little easier in dark situations where maybe there's not enough detail. Uh, you have your center lock on autofocus if you want that. Um, autofocus with shutter, definitely keep that on. You have your autofocus area registration, autofocus area auto clear. I mean, you really don't need to know some of these. Some of these you'll never change, some of these you'll never use, and that's okay. If you do have questions about something that I skip over because I don't think it's going to reach enough people um, or, you know, it's just going to be a waste of time, let me know on the comments below. I'll be happy to explain anything that um, you need more uh, explanation on. You have your exposure compensation, which again is this dial up here. You can reset it. You can change your ISO, the auto, auto ISO settings, what you want to set the limit on, your metering mode. Again, these are on your quick menu. Um, you have your flash modes if you want red eye reduction if you're using your flash. Uh, the white balance, um, creative style, all of those are in your quick menu. Soft skin effect is more of an automatic setting, which is why it's grayed out. The focus magnifier is used when you're using manual focus. It kind of zooms in a little bit where you can really make sure that your image is actually in focus, which is kind of nice. Uh, you can set a time to it. Uh, if you want the uh, magnification to be one times or 5.3 times, depending on how far you're focusing. Um, you can also set like a peaking, so it'll uh, outline in a specific color like red, yellow, or white to show what's in focus. Uh, the focus ring uh, rotation, if you want it to be left or right. Um, you have smile and face detection, which is nice. So the smile detection will take a picture when it detects a smile. The face detection will just like uh, focus directly on a face. It won't take a picture unless you want it to. Face registration will actually remember people if you want it to. Um, the second tab here, of course, it's gonna, you're going to find a lot of uh, repetitiveness because it's going to essentially be the same thing as tab one, uh, just settings for video. So I'm just going to kind of go through these. You have quality, um, image size if you want to take a picture during video, which is actually going to be a lower quality than if you weren't shooting video, so do keep that in mind. Um, how fast you want the autofocus to be. Um, you're adjusting your audio recording and wind no noise reduction, your stabilization, which is steady shot. Uh, if you want to set a mic marker display, go to release without card. I always disable this option. The reason I do is because if you're anything like me and you forget to put a card in your camera or uh, you accidentally leave it in your computer or your drawer and you forget to put one in, and you go and you start taking pictures, if this is enabled, it'll allow you to take pictures, but it's not saving to anything. So at least when it's disabled and you go and take a picture, it automatically tells you, hey, I don't have a card in here, so you better go get one. So at least then you won't be so disappointed. Um, you have zoom settings, the zoom function of the ring, uh, your display button, the finder and monitor, if you want to put on a grid line on the screen to help you with your composition. Um, auto review for the picture to pop up after you've taken it to take a look at it if you want to turn that off or set it for longer. I think two seconds is a pretty good time. Your custom keys. So the custom key on the side of the lens, you have the custom two, custom one, and custom three button, the function menu set if you want to change those settings around. 
um, the movie button if you always wanted it to play uh, record a movie in every setting um, audio signals if you wanted to keep that on letting you know when it's focused or when it can't focus and then we're in the third tab here this is where you're going to connect it to your smartphone or your iPad or whatever you want to do um, you'll just go send a smartphone and you'll actually follow the um, imaging edge mobile app um, on your phone to connect it. It's actually fairly easy. Sony is one of the easier cameras to connect to your smartphone, which is nice. At least that's what I've come to find. If you aren't planning on sending your pictures to your phone uh, at, you know, extremely soon, um, I would set your airplane mode on because what that will do is it'll actually uh, turn these options off to send it to your smartphone. It'll actually save the battery in your camera. Um, so I would definitely do that if you're like, eh, you know, I'll do it at the end of the day. At least then keep the airplane mode on for the rest of the, or keep the airplane mode on until you get to that point where you want to transfer pictures. Uh, you also have Bluetooth, you can edit the device name. You also have the playback menu. You can delete pictures. Um, you can do a slideshow. You can do rotation, set that on auto, rotate images, protect images, enlarge images. And then we have our toolbox here, which will adjust like the monitor brightness, the viewfinder brightness, uh, volume settings to, you know, play back video on the camera. Um, if you want to uh, edit how you delete pictures, if you want the cancel to be highlighted first or the delete button to be highlighted first, just to be safe. Um, you have your power save mode, your touch operation. I mean, this most digital cameras these days are fully customizable which is pretty neat uh, so it gives you a lot of options but because there are so many options this can be very overwhelming for a lot of people so just keep in mind that when you do set these you shouldn't have to set them again which is great um, you should be able to set things on the outside of the camera so you don't have to continually go in and search through the menu um, you have your HDMI settings, your USB settings, your language, your date and time, your area. Um, I always go over formatting your card on every video because I think a lot of people don't realize what formatting your card means. Um, so instead of going through and deleting with the trash can, just deleting all your pictures and reusing your card, you want to actually go in and format it. And the reason you want to do that is because when you delete with the trash can, your just deleting the visible file. You know, it may say the card is empty, but it's actually still taking up room because the data is still there. And it's overwriting that data when you take a picture. When you do that over and over and over again without ever formatting your card, it actually can cause problems like locks. The, the card will lock you out. It'll start, um, corruption can happen where you actually lose images you lose memories so every now and then it doesn't have to be every time you use the card um but definitely every once in a while and be like oh it's been a while since i formatted my card and you want to start fresh you've made sure all of your pictures are backed up onto your computer or backed up onto an external source or whatever it may be you can go in you can go to format and permanently erase everything on the card and start new um, so it's definitely something to remember and keep in mind. Uh, here you can see your firmware version, reset your settings. So if you do something and you change a setting and you're like, I don't know what I did, but my camera's doing something funky and no one knows how to help you, you can always go to uh, setting reset and just reset the settings to how you purchased it. And that should fix the problem. And then the last tab here is your My Menu setting. So if there are... So if you go through the button, your customizing buttons on the outside of the camera, you set them to what you want and you're like, shoot, I still want to be able to easily access, I don't know, formatting my card without having to go through all these tabs and try and find the word format. What you can do is you can find what you couldn't put on the outside of the camera and you can add the item to your my menu setting. So every time you need to find it and it's not on the outside of your camera, all you have to go is to the star tab and it's gonna be there. So even that's customizable. Um, other than that, it pretty much sums up this camera. This has been voted one of the best birding cameras because of its light intake, because of its speed, um, because it's a one inch sensor. It's a good all in one here and um, 
of course because of its zoom range. Um, I would definitely say this is going to be one of the better bridge cameras to get. It is really pricey, um, but not. But there are very few bridge cameras that offer that 2.4 aperture option. So that's a lot of what you're paying for. The 24 frames per second um, at its full resolution, that's what you're paying for. It's going to be for people that are wanting to take pictures of birds, that are wanting to take pictures of their family, um, take pictures of their kids, of their pets on vacation, and get really high quality images that it's gonna be an all-in-one. And you won't have to worry about buying lenses or anything like that. Um, but again, do keep in mind of that low light issue. If you do plan on doing a lot, lot of long exposure photography, if you plan on doing a lot of uh, evening shots or indoor shots or anything like that, that's where it can start to struggle. So do keep that in mind. If you guys have any questions about this camera that I didn't get to, please let me know in the comments below. Or if you have a different camera that you would like me to go over, maybe some tips and tricks. Let me know. I'd be happy to go over them. Until next time, keep your eye out for inspiration, Shutterbugs. Bye.